happy Halloween YouTube team movies here. Now, we already know that 2020 has been a dumpster fire. I mean, it's one, pretty much obviously one of the most worst years ever. I mean, there was, has been so many horror movies that was supposed to get released this year. But because of the uh, pandemic, they ended up getting pushed back. Hopefully, 2021 will be much better. Like, hopefully, theaters will be up and running by then. Hopefully, uh, we'll be back to normal. That's what's going on. But, uh, anyway, there, ha there are some really interesting... As of right now, there are some interesting horror films that are set to be released next year. So what I'm going to do is go down the list of the horror films that are scheduled to be released so, um, next year. Uh, whether they have release dates, whether they don't have release dates. Uh, anyway, here's what's coming out. Alright, opening up in uh, January, we got this horror film titled The Devil's Light. This is supposed to be the first, uh, horror, the first horror film um, to be released in 2021. It's about a young nun who comes face to face with a demon force, uh, force while uh, performing her first exorcism. So this is another one of those uh, the exorcist based uh, films. This actually like looks... Thanks. Thank is you that? for dressing up as well. Have a week. You should. <laughs> we love our ass. We want. Anywho, uh, as I was saying, The Devil's Light, you know, it's another exorcism film. And, I mean, there hasn't really been a great one for forever. I mean, obviously the most iconic exorcism movie is The Exorcist. And The Exorcist is one of the most iconic... It's one of the most iconic horror films there is. Since then, they uh, tried to capitalize on the uh, classic of The Exorcist by doing other exorcism films. Sadly, they said it's been some that work, like the exes of them, the roses, okay. But this actually sounds like it'd be pretty uh, interesting. I'm really uh, interesting. All right, coming in uh, February, a film that was supposed to get released this year, but because of the epidemic, ended up getting delayed. Uh, we got the horror film produced by Guillermo del Toro, Antler. Now, this film was supposed to be released back in April, but because of you know the pandemic, yeah. Uh, it's about a mysterious creature who escapes from its, uh, confines to wreck bloody havoc... ...to wreck a bloody, um, havoc on, in a, a small origin, uh, town. This actually looks pretty cool. Uh, you know, you got Kerry Rasta from, uh, Felicity fame. Uh, you got Jesse Clemens is in this. It's directed by, uh, Scott Cooper, who's best known for directing, uh, movies like Black Mass. Uh, he did, um... Let's see. Oh, yeah, he did that uh, Casey Affleck uh, film. Oh, thank you for yesterday. That Casey Affleck and Woody Harrison film that got released a couple years back. Uh, he directed uh, Jeff Bridges to an Oscar for uh, Crazy Hearts. He's directed some pretty good stuff. This is, of course, his first horror feature he's doing. And it looks really insane. I mean, I'm always a sucker for creature movies uh, that where creatures are attacking. It is a Gamma the Tar produced film, so there's that. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking for a check, uh, that was out. Alright, coming in March, another film that was supposed to get released this year because of the epidemic, it got, uh, delayed. We got Morbius. Now, I'm still not really sure if we could really consider an actual horror film. It's more like an action horror, I'm guessing. But of course, this is the, uh, Spider-Man spinoff starring, uh, Jared Leto as, uh, Michael Morbius, who, of course, ends up becoming, pretty much, uh, transforming himself as a, uh, as a vampire and of course this is set in the aspire verse i mean we are of course we in the trail we see michael keaton um and uh we're hearing like we're seeing some uh spider-man allures in this one it looks great i mean it looks interesting um I mean, 2021 is pretty much going to be the year of Spider-Man. Like, we got Morbius coming out. We got the third Spider-Man film. We got Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Uh, I mean, if you're, if you're a fan of, like, a Spider-Man fan, next year is going to be your year. All right. Uh, coming out on, uh, in April, we got A Quiet Place 2. About, uh, of course, this is the uh, fall to 27, um, 2018's uh, Quiet Place, directed by John Krasinski, starring Emily Blunt. Uh, we got some new additions, like, uh, we got the likes of, uh, Cillian Murphy, John Hans, who's in this. Qu the first Quiet Place was much better than it had any attention to me. I mean, who ever knew that John Krasinski, you know, uh, the, the guy from The Office, who ever knew that he could do a, a comedy, like, a horror film well? He showed that he did a pretty a decent job with a horror film like this. I mean, this time around, uh, the Abbott family uh, must now face 
the uh, terrors of outside world as a uh, fight for the uh, survival and um, silence. Forced to venture into the uh, unknown, they realize that uh, the creatures they uh, that hunt by sound are not um, only dreads but lurk beyond uh, and uh, and uh, sad hat. This looks really good. I mean, the film never really. Um, at first, the film was supposed to was supposed to come out back in uh, April, um, back in March, but then it got delayed to uh, September, and now it's coming out in uh, April. I'm hoping uh, they stick to that date because I really want to see the Quiet Place 2 uh, return. I mean, the first, and of course, we're already getting like a dirt Quiet Place uh, down the line. Uh, so, yeah, can I wait to check out where they're going to take the sequel to? Also, coming out in April, we got uh, Edgar Wright's horror film Last Night in Soho about a young girl uh, who's passionate about uh, fashion design is mysteriously able to enter the 1960s where she uh, encounters her idol, a dazzling wannabe uh, singer. But 1960s London is not what it seems, and uh, time should be far uh, apart with uh, shady um, consequences. Now, this stars Anna Taylor Joy, uh, who's the first which is seen in the new units. Uh, the film also has uh, the late game returns actors Diana Rigg, uh, guy, uh, Doctor Who actor uh, Matt Smith. This thing sounds interesting. I mean, it's, uh, I guess you could say it is technically Edgar Wright's first um, actual horror film. I mean, yeah, he did Shaun the Dead, but that was more like a comedic horror film. This is actually his uh, first serious horror flick, so. It looks, it sounds interesting. I mean, the film was supposed to come out in September, but ended up getting delayed because of the epidemic. So hopefully we'll get like some sort of trailer down the line because I'm always um, interested to check out another Edgar Wright film. And who just does a lot of Edgar Wright? I mean, Shaun the Dead, uh, Baby Driver, Edgar Wright could do no wrong. All right, coming out in May, a film that we should have been seeing by now. And that is Spiral from the Book of Saw. Now, this is, of course, uh, the new Saw movie uh, that stars Samuel Jackson and Chris Rock. I mean, whenever you think of, uh, of Chris Rock and Samuel Jackson, Saw does not come into your mind. But that's what we get with this new uh, Saw movie. It looks really terrific. I mean, of course, the trailer uh, got released early on um, this year. But because of the epidemic, it had to, uh, you know, um, the film ended up getting pushed back. I mean, I, I really do like the Saw movies. I mean, yeah, they're like torture porn and whatnot, but they are so darn fun to watch. Sadly, this is going to be the uh, first actual Saw movie to not feature uh, Jigsaw. So, I mean, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with the puppet here. Uh, are we going to get like a new transition in the puppet or whatnot? But that aside, it looks really cool. It looks gory. I mean, you know, the movie, actually, the trailer won me when, uh, when Samuel Jackson caught Jigsaw a motherfucker, okay? When Samuel Jackson caught Jigsaw a motherfucker, you saw me, all right? You, you, you just saw me uh, hands down, you know? Anyway, you want to play gay, motherfucker? <laughs> Gotta love Sam Jackson. All right, coming in, uh, opening up in June, we got The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Another film that was supposed to get released back in uh, September, but got delayed because of the epidemic. Now, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It sounds awesome. Uh, this time around, we got uh, paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren who try to uncover the truth behind a uh, murder's claim of a demonic uh, possession. I mean, the Conjury movies has been hit and misses. You know, the first two Conjury movies were pretty cool. Of course, uh, the animated films I, I thought was okay. The only one that I did not really like much has been, uh, has actually been, um, The Nun uh, and Curse of Lolly Rona. Those were uh, pretty much uh, like the only two, uh, uh, films in the Conjuring universe that I was not too fun with. But this is supposed to have, like, even where it was, it's supposed to have, like, a killer, um, you know, possessed by a demon. Oh, uh, we got Verify Me and Patrick Wilson coming back here. What more can you guys for, you know? Oh, no, the film is from the same director, Curse of Law of the Runner. So, 
Uh, that there kind of kind of worries me there because La La Rona was not so good. So yeah. Anyway, also coming out in July, we got the Forever Purge, the newest element of the Purge uh, franchise, and it's supposed to be the finest element. But let's be for real. We've seen movies where uh, they have the finest, where the film is quite a fine stomach. But they end up doing more. We know how long it is. But I mean, the first Purge, I remember watching the uh, first ever Purge movie back in 2013 with my uh, siblings. I love the Purge films. They're really fun. Uh, I mean, pretty much uh, in real life, it feels like uh, we're uh, living in the Purge now. I mean, a film where uh, crime is legal for 24 hours and you can do whatever you want. How how much cool is that? I mean, I, I don't think that will ever work in real life, but yeah. Anyway, uh, the Purge, the uh, Purge movies just are still not fun. They're really uh, violent, bloody. So I'm looking forward to check out uh, the uh, next uh, Purge one. Now, of course, the Forever Purge. Pinky fucking Now, the Forever Purge was supposed to come out uh, this past July, but of course, because of the pandemic, they ended up doing this too, so hopefully it'll come out next year. All right, co- also coming out in July, we've got uh, M. Night Shyamalan's new film, Ode, which I still have no idea what this movie is about. But it's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Obviously, there's going to have a twist in it involved. I mean, I do like me a good M. Night Shyamalan flick, and... Uh, this also has an interesting cast. You've got the likes of a uh, hereditary actor, uh, Alex Wolf. You got a uh, JoJo Rabbit um, actress, Thomas and McKenzie, who's also in uh, Last Night in Soho. I mean, uh, old set. I mean, I have no idea what it's about, but hey, I'll still watch it because Anna Shulman has been, you know, he's for, for a while. Anna Shulman's name has been a joke, you know. Because of stuff like uh, The Last Airbender, uh, After Earth, uh, Lay in the War, The Happening. But then came around this little movie he did called, uh, called The Visit. And The Visit is much better than he intended to be. Then he gave a split, and then after that he gave us Glass, which a lot of people didn't like Glass, but lots, even people who did not like Glass will admit that it is one of my M. better films. But that aside, oh, I don't know what it's about, but I'm at least intrigued by it because it, because I'm have become a, a fan of Amnesty Shyamalan again. So, I mean, who just does not love the Shyam Hammer anymore? All right. Coming out the first week of April, we got Hotel Transylvania 4, you know, with Adam Sandler, Selena Gomez. I guess you could count it as a horror film. It's mostly a horror for kids, but, you yeah. know. Uh, there's Don't Breathe 2 coming, uh, which, with, of course, uh, Slang himself, Stephen Lang. I mean, the first Don't Breathe, directed by Fetty Alvarez, is awesome. You know, I really love the first Don't Breathe. Looking forward to, you know, checking out the sequel when it gets released. This time around, uh, instead of being the, uh, the antagonist, uh, he's now the uh, protagonist, so he's pretty much the hero in the new, uh, Don't Breathe film. So I'm looking forward to checking out the, uh, Don't Breathe, uh, sequel. And it does have a new director as well, so there's that, so, anyway. Alright, lost the, the next one. Alright, also coming out, um, speaking of movies that we were supposed to see because of the uh, pandemic, you know, got moved, there is the Candyman. I mean, the um, new incarnation of Candyman looks awesome. You know, the film was supposed to come out in June, but then got delayed to April, and now it's coming out in, uh, in August of next year. You know, we got Tony Todd coming back, who does not love Tony Todd. Uh, we got Yaya Abdul Mati the second, who's supposed to be the new um, Candyman. Uh, it, it's produced by Jordan Peele, directed by uh, the upcoming Captain Marvel 2 director, Nia Takasa. There is so much to keep your eye out for this upcoming Candyman film. It looks amazing, looks creepy. You know, I cannot wait to see where they're going to take other Candyman sequel to. Hopefully it comes out next year, because I really want to see Candyman so bad. It, it looks really awesome. Alright, coming in September, we got an entire new line horror film. That could be anything. Maybe it could be another contract film. Who knows? 
Well, that could actually be uh, James Wan. Maybe that release date could be for James Wan's movie. Uh, oh, yeah, this that could be a possibility. I mean, James Wan does have to be <laughs> working with Addicts here. So maybe James Wan's film could come out that day. Who knows? Uh, coming out on... Uh, Another kids' uh, family horror film coming out next year. We got uh, coming in September, um, in October. We got the Adams Family sequel. Really quite enjoyed the first Adams Family, so look forward to checking out the sequel. Another film that was supposed to get released this year. Like we were supposed to literally see this movie this month, actually. Yeah, we just got the trailer this past week. Uh, coming out this um, one horror film, probably the most anticipated horror film of next year. We got Michael Myers returning, baby, for Halloween Kills. I mean, what more can you ask for? You got Michael Myers, uh, you know, coming back, slicing, dicing people once again. You got Jamie Lee Curtis coming back. You got some of the original uh, characters returning. You got Anthony Michael Hart coming uh, to play Tommy Doyle. What more can you ask for there? Uh, you got the original director, um, David Gordon Green, back on board. You got the original music. Supposed to be even more violent than the original. I mean, the body count, from what I heard, the body count in the new Halloween movie is insane, you know? It's really uh, messed up. It's very, it's even more bloodier than the originals. So, yeah, come on. Who just does not love seeing Michael Myers uh, slaying people? Alright. Another horror icon who is set to make his screen return. Now, the next movies I'm going to be talking about don't even have release day, so no worries if they are even coming out next year or uh, when they're coming out. So, take that out for grass up. Alright, next horror films that are set to be released next year. We got The Return of Letterface, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a new, uh, this one's actually, they're pulling like a Halloween where they're, uh, we're supposed to be like a flop to the original Texas Chainsaw. Here's what the new Texas Chainsaw is about. Melody is a 25-year-old San Francisco uh, moneymaker who drags her younger teenage uh, sister uh, with her to Texas on a business trip out of fear living, uh, leaving her alone in the big uh, city. The sister Dreamer is an amateur photographer who is a wheelchair-bound uh, character and it's not long until they're fighting their lives against a 60-year-old Letterface. I mean, Letterface is going to be 60 years old uh, in this film. Holy cow, they're going to be fa- Forget Old Man Logan, they're going to be facing Old Man Letterface, you know? And I really also like the character is a wheelchair-bound character because this guy, uh, uh, it is a uh, callback to the to the very original um, Texas Chainsaw where they had like a wheelchair-bound character. I mean, this sounds awesome. You know, uh, I, I was a little hesitant because uh, they ended up having, um, you know, throwing out uh, pretty much uh, firing some of these directors and all because they were a fan of the script. They got new directors on board, so hopefully it'll be much better. I mean, I do quite like the Texas Chainsaw films. You know, he just does not love seeing Larface uh, slaying people with a chainsaw, you know? So I cannot wait to see where, uh... I mean, I cannot wait to see the 60-year-old uh, Larface. I really wish we had Gunnar Hansen back, but R.I.P. Gunnar Hansen. I'm um, curious to see who they're going to actually play the new Larface. Anyway. I mean, we got Mike Myers and Leatherface and even Chucky coming out next year as TV format still. I mean, boy, next year's gonna be horror fans' wet dream. All right. Uh, coming to Netflix, we got a horror film directed by Zack Snyder titled Army of the Dead. We're following a zombie outbreak in uh, Las Vegas. Group of mercenaries take the ultimate gamble, venturing into the uh, quarantine zone to pull off the greatest heist ever attempted. I mean, come on, Army of the Dead, directed by Zack Snyder, his uh, first major feature since, uh, you know, the, since the DCU and all. I mean, this is also his first zombie movie since Dawn of the Dead, the 2004 remake. I mean, it, this thing is, I mean, the, there's no confidence uh, film. They're already doing like a couple of spinoffs. They got like an anime spinoff coming. I mean, Zack Snyder, he, he's a bit of a joke now because lots of people are not fans of his DC films, but I quite like his uh, DC films. I mean, I quite like Man of Steel. I uh, cannot wait to check out the Snyder Cut when that um, premieres on HBO Max. 
So this actually looks really awesome. You know, you got Dave Bautista in this. Uh, who does not? Who does not love a good uh, zombie-based movie? I mean, it looks like oh, it sounds like Ocean's Eleven meets The Walking Dead. That's what you got with this one. So, yeah, cannot wait to check this one out. All right, supposedly coming out next year, we got the Exorcist uh, reboot coming. I mean, this was actually announced not so long ago, believe it or not, that um, that they all plan to do a remake of the Exorcist, and it's not. Oh, and you know, the film is also uh, coming out sometime next year. So by next year, we're gonna see a new Exorcist. I mean, the original Exorcist that got released in nineteen in the nineteen seventies is one of the most iconic horror movies of the of that era. There's so many uh, iconic horror movies in the seventies, by the way. But the Exorcist, I mean, who are you gonna get to play, possibly play uh, the character of Reagan? I mean, L Linda Blair played that, played that role just so iconic. One of those iconic, creepiest uh, children to ever put on screen. I mean, are you gonna, once again, see the, uh, I mean, remember uh, the, uh, the night turn, uh, the pea soup scene? I mean, the Exorcist is a reason why I cannot ever eat pea soup, all right? I, I'm, not, I'm not even joking. I can never eat pea soup because of the Exorcist, you know? But, yeah, I'm looking forward to check out a remake. I mean, because if it sucks, who cares? Still got the original, so it's not going to hurt my ton. It's not going to tarnish my love of the original. So I'm always a treat to check this one out. So no director or ride off one, so who knows if it's even coming next year. Another couple of horror movies that were supposed to get released this year. We got Saint Maud, which is another exorcism film from a H24. This was supposed to come out this past April, but then it got delayed to, uh, to I believe, uh, July, and now it's uh, coming out in uh, sometime in 2021. It's H24, so I'm already interested because of uh, because of it being from uh, H24. I mean, reviews for this film, by the way, it actually premiered, uh, like, at a couple of film festivals. I believe it premiered in the UK, because uh, I guess theirs are open in the UK. But, yeah, this thing looks really creepy. It looks terrifying. I mean, this could easily be, end up being the best access in the movie since The Exodus, you know? Alright. Hey, just lost that. Alright, speaking of A24, A24 has other horror films coming next year. There's the medieval horror movie, The Green Knight, which I don't, a lot of people are considering it a horror film. I did not really get a horror vibe from the trailer. But The Green Knight is, of course, a movie that was supposed to get released this year, but it got delayed next year. It stars the likes of Deb Patel, uh, Joe Egerton. I'm looking forward to checking this one out. I mean, who does not love a good medieval film? Also coming to, uh, to us from A24, we got Fox Positive. With it, which starts the likes of Pierce Brosnan, and that should be a contemporary uh, take on Rosemary's Baby. Uh, this film was supposed to come out this year, I'm guessing, but like everything else, got um, is not going to come out until next year. It sounds interesting. I mean, A24 makes some really cool horror films. Not every A24, not every A24 horror movies I really like. Like I'm one of the, f the few folks who were not a fan of The Witch. Uh, but of course, they did The Lighthouse. They did Tusk. So. Are uh, they the green room? So maybe this could be pretty uh, interesting. Alright, also coming um, to this. Uh, next year we got Till Death, which stars Megan Fox as a woman who is left handcuffed to her dead husband as a part of a sick revenge plot. Unable to unshackle, she has to survive uh, as two killers arrive to uh, finish her off. This sounds interesting. I mean, is Megan Fox back um, in the horror genre? Of course, she is best known for. Um, of course, she did start in Jennifer's body. Uh, Till that sounds really intriguing. I mean, we're pretty much gonna be seeing Megan Fox handcuffed to her husband. This okay could be interesting. Uh, I mean, you know, Megan Fox is not really that great of an actress, but who does not love seeing Megan Fox on screen? I mean, come on. Also returning next year, we got a new Children of the Corn film, which is described, um, the film describes the events leading up to and including um, the massacre of the adults of a uh, small town in Nebraska by their children after the adults irresponsibly ruins the crop and uh, the children's future. I mean, we are seeing, we're going to be seeing kids pretty much slay adults, okay? This, this is pretty much kids going to be killing, alright? Who does not love seeing movies where kids are killing? Come on. Uh, Orphan's a pretty good one. Um, 
Uh, what else is there? Um, I guess you say The Good Son. I mean, the original Children of the Corn, of course, based on a book by Stephen King. Who just does not love, you know, um, Children of the Corn? It's one of the most iconic horror movies that ever. ever uh, some of the most creepiest kids there are. I mean, I'm looking forward to checking out this new Children of the Corn. Alright, also coming next here, we got Escape Room 2, the follow-up to uh, last year's Escape Room, which I'm looking forward to checking out um, where they're going to take the sequel to. Uh, we got a horror film directed by BJ Novak from a mini project fame, uh, Todd Vengeance, about a radio host uh, from uh, New York who attempts to solve the murder of his uh, of his um, girlfriend and travels down south to investigate the circumstances of her death and discover what happened to her. Could be interesting. Uh, it stars the likes of Isa Ray, Ashton Kutcher, Dove Cameron. Cool. Uh, there's uh, Netflix has a Fear Street trilogy, uh, which is based on a on a couple of books by uh, R.L. Stein about uh, a murder mystery shakes up the town in Shady Side, Ohio. So it's a, pretty much a, a murder mystery. Now R.L. Stein, of course, is best known for writing the Goosebumps books. This is actually his most uh, grown-up film uh, he's he's written. I'm interested in checking one out. I mean, it was supposed to get released by Fox, but ended up getting, um, but instead now it's going to Netflix, which could be interesting. Alright, coming out next year, we got um, a new reboot of the Wrong Turn uh, films. Now, it's where a team of friends are taking um, a hike in the Appalachian uh, tra Trail. They soon conf they are soon confronted by the Foundation, a community of people who have lived in the mountains for hundreds of years. Of course, the uh, Wrong Turn movies are really gory. I mean, we're going to be seeing these uh, these little True Finger characters are really, are pretty much hillbilly uh, killers, you know? So I'm interested to check out this new Wrong Turn film. Uh, I love the Wrong Turn franchise. They're, they're dumb, yeah, why not? But I really always got kicked out of them, so I'm looking forward to see where they're gonna take the uh, new Wrong Turn film at. So yeah, I'm. who does not love a good horror film? I mean, if any of you guys like the Wrong Turn franchise, comment below. Uh, comment below which one is your favorite out of the franchise. Uh, another sequel coming next year, we got Terrifier 2, which, after being resurrected by a sinister entity, Arthur Klein returns to a uh, timid town of Miles County where he targets a teenage girl and her younger brother on Halloween night. The first Terrifier, which ended up being a bit of a spin-off of the anthology film, uh, or Hallow's Eve, I love the original um, Terrifier. It's really... It's gory, it's really fun, it's bloody. Arthur Clown, well, he's no uh, Pennywise or anything. Arthur Clown is... He's going to end up being one of the most iconic horror movies in the future. He's going to be... He's such an awesome character. Uh, I'm looking forward to see where they're going to take the sequel to. So, yeah. I mean, if you guys have really seen the first Terrifier, give that one a shot. Alright. Uh, another horror film coming, we've got The Collected, a uh, sequel to uh, The Collector and The Collection. Uh, the first two collecting movies are pretty fun. Uh, look forward to checking out the sequel. we got a horror film tied, uh, Yuma, which is uh, the first major uh, American horror film to be directed by an Asian woman and uh, starring an Asian woman. Uh, it stars uh, Sandra O. Oh. And in it, uh, it's about Amanda and her daughter who, living in a quiet life on an American farm. But when the remains of her estranged mother arrive from Korea, Amanda becomes haunted by the fear of turning into her own mother. This sounds interesting. I mean, Sandro, it's nice to see her in a horror film like this. Uh, I mean, you don't really see much, you know, uh, Asian-based horror films unless they're, they have subtitles in them, as a matter of fact. So it is pretty cool to see like a uh, Asian American horror film uh, for a change nowadays. It look it sounds interesting, so check this one out when it whenever it comes out. Alright, coming to uh Alright, coming to Netflix, uh we got a horror film tied, uh there's something inside your house where uh, the graduating class of Osborne High is being targeted by a master sailor intent on exposing the darkest secret of each victim, and only a, um, a group of misfit outsiders can stop the uh, killing. This sounds interesting. I mean, 
This is also from uh, the same director of the uh, Creep movie, so there's that. Uh, it sounds cool. I'm, Netflix doesn't really do much on uh, slasher films, so it is cool seeing Netflix doing a uh, slasher movie for a change. So this could be pretty uh, interesting to watch. Alright, coming, also coming, we got, uh, oh, we got the new reboot of Urban Legend. This is a, um, this is pretty much like a reboot of the Urban Legend franchise about a diverse cast of college students <coughs> as they navigate a series of bizarre deaths that resemble Urban Legends linked to the, uh, linked to the darkest corners of social media. So obviously, social media was not really a thing when the movie uh, Urban Legend movies got released. So it's gonna be cool that this time around it's gonna take um, place to, around uh, you know social media, like the age of social media and all. It this thing sounds interesting. I mean, I do like the Urban Legend films; they're more outstanding. But yeah, I'm looking forward to check out a new Urban Legend. I mean, I think it's probably time for a new one uh, down the line. So I'm glad to see that we're getting a new one. Uh, there's also a new Resident Evil film coming next year. Uh, there's um, David Slade, the director of uh, Dark of, um, of uh, Dark Days of Night, I think it's called, and the Twilight Saga Eclipse. He has a movie coming uh, called Dark Harvest. Kevin Smith has the horror anthology of uh, film Ty Kilroy. Uh, Olivia Wilde has uh, Don't Worry Darling, which sounds like a horror. Of course, there's uh, Run Sweetheart Run. There is Willy's Wonderland coming next year. I mean, there's so many horror movies coming. I cannot really, I pretty much cannot really uh, go and uh, you know talk about every single horror movie coming next year. Now, of course, Willy's Wonderland, by the way, has Nicolas Cage fight animatronic, uh, animatronic uh, characters. So, what more can you ask for with that one? Anyway. Yeah, I cannot wait to check lots of these horror films out. There's so many, I mean, you know, probably this week I'll go ahead and rank my top 10 anticipated horror films uh, coming next year. So I'll make uh, like a separate video of that. But I mean, there are also, also some horror shows coming as well. Like there's a I Know What You Did Last Summer series coming. There's a Chucky series coming. Uh, so there's lots of horror TV shows to keep your eye out for too. But yeah, lots of interesting horror movies uh, to look forward to. Anyway, let me leave it to you guys. Oh, you know, which of these horror movies are you looking forward to check out next year? Are you looking forward to check out Halloween Kills? Are you looking forward to check out, uh, I don't know. Are you looking forward to check out, uh, you know, Candyman, etc.? Drop comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more notifications. This is your C-Moves. I